This week we'll be studying Genesis 2. We just came out of the beginning of creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God, everything that God created, he said, was very good. So he's just finished his creation, and everything was perfect, just as he wanted it to be. And so we're coming into chapter 2 of Genesis. And the last part of Genesis 1 is found in chapter 2. So for today, we're just going to um, review what the Sabbath means and, and the importance of the Sabbath rest for us today. I want to read Genesis 2. 1 and 2. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Because on it, he rested from all the work of creating he had done. So as God had created, and everything that he created was very good. It says he did all of this in seven days, but on the seventh day he rested he completed his work in six days and rested on the seventh and he did this as an example for us to follow an example of work and rest a pattern of work and rest work was something that God instituted for man it was not a result of the curse um, work became hard because of sin but none of that is come into being yet until we'll see it in chapter 2 Right now, let's just look at this verse 1 and 2 of chapter 2. And I just want to talk a little bit about what the Sabbath rest is and why um, setting apart that seventh day is so important for us in our lives today. It says, God completed his work of creation in six days, and then he rested. God blessed that seventh day, and he made it holy. It was not like the rest of the days. It is one of the Ten Commandments that we are commanded to follow. He tells us to remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. That is very important to remember. The Sabbath is a direct indication of God's consecration of Israel as well as of his creation. Why is it important that we take a Sabbath rest? It has been said that most people in our world live between two thieves, the regrets of yesterday and the worries of tomorrow. That's when they can't enjoy today. We are always on the go, frantically going from place to place, trying to do things the fastest way we can so that we can do, put more things on our plate and do more stuff. We have so much noise and business in our lives that we often don't take time to sit before the Lord, to be still and know that He is God. I have a sign in, in my house at the bottom of my stairs that says, um, let us be silent that we may hear the whisper of God. And we don't like to be silent. We've always got to have noise going on around us. We've always got to be moving. We've always got to be busy. But the Lord says, sit still and know that I am God. You think of that story of Mary and Martha. And, and the Lord said that Mary was doing what was needed most. And what was she doing? She was sitting at the feet of Jesus and listening to his voice. Martha was distracted by everything around her. So that she wasn't doing the most important thing. As we sit at the feet of Jesus and listen to his voice, then we're able to go out and do the work he has called us to do. But when we're going out working without sitting at his feet, we're going to get tired and we're going to get weary. So we must learn to rest before the Lord. God did not rest because he was tired, because he does not grow weary or tired. And we see that in Isaiah. He blessed his seventh day and set it aside as holy, and we are to follow this example that he set for us. Sabbath means rest specifically from work and our normal routines of life. We can prepare for the Sabbath by studying God's word and prayer. It is a day to set aside to focus on the Lord, to be renewed and energized in our spiritual walk. It's a time to rest and be renewed as we worship with the body of Christ. Encouraging one another, praying for one another, and carrying each other's burdens. This is, a, this is a day to be spiritually energized as we go into the world with our eyes fixed on Jesus. We set aside Sundays unto the Lord because it is the seventh day and because it is the day the Lord rose from the dead. That's why we celebrate, why we put Sunday as a day um, to rest. And that is our Sabbath day because of the resurrection of the Lord on that day. 
Hebrews 10.25 says, We are not to give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. So the Lord has called us to set aside Sundays as a day of rest. And it's not just a day of resting, like taking a nap, which I do on Sundays, um, or not doing anything. But he's more specifically, he says we're to make it holy. And we do that by making sure that Sundays are the day we focus on being in church. Sunday morning, Sunday night, being in Sunday school. Um, focusing on the Lord, growing in the Lord, encouraging our brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, we need each other. And the Lord knew that we would need each other. We need that time to be with the Lord, to stop from our normal routine and our daily work. He gives us six days to get all of our work done, all of our studies done, so that we can spend that one day just focusing on Him, resting and relaxing, not only physically, but in Him. Uh, some of the things that we do in our family or have done over the years to set aside that seventh day is holy is to make sure we were in church. Yes, my husband is a pastor, so that was a given. But even if he wasn't, we would make sure that we were in church because that's an important place for us to be as a family, growing in the Lord together and being encouraged by the body of Christ, who is our family. Um, we didn't, we tried to make it different by not, um, I didn't do housework on Sundays. I don't do housework on Sundays. The kids, we didn't let them play sports on Sundays. We didn't let them do travel ball that was going to keep them away from church on Sundays. We made sure that they knew that being in church was a very important thing, not only to us, but to the Lord. And so we focused on that, and we made sure that that, that was our priority. I also cooked a meal, and we always had um, people over, so that was kind of our family tradition, tradition to... Um, to cook and have people over and yes that was my work but all I did was put some meat in a crock pot and cook a few vegetables and it didn't take that much effort but it made Sundays a special time of fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ and with our family everybody was normally always here on Sundays at lunch plus we always had college students or other people over for lunch and we still do that today bring people into our home to um, practice hospitality like the Lord has called us to do on Sundays um, it was just a, a slow day for us, a day to be with our family and to worship the Lord and to seek Him. And so I just want to encourage you to make Sundays be different. You know, today you can go shopping on Sunday and, and you can play sports on Sunday. And, and for the rest of the world, Sunday is no different than every other day. But for us as Christians, Sunday is different. You think about Chick-fil-A and how they're closed on Sundays and what how the Lord has blessed their obedience to be closed on Sunday. You know, he's taken care of them as they've trusted the Lord to meet their needs by closing on Sundays and, and um, letting their people um, experience the Sabbath rest. And so we need to try to think of ways that we can make Sundays be a holy day for our families because that is a command from the Lord. And as we walk in obedience to the Lord, he blesses that obedience. Take time to rest. Stop what you normally do. Finish your work in six days and then take that day to rest and focus on the Lord and spend time with your family. That will honor the Lord. It's not only a physical rest, but also a spiritual rest as our souls learn to find rest in God alone. Augustine was correct when he said, Thou hast made us for, th for thyself, and our hearts are restless until we find rest in thee. Isaiah 40, 28 through 31 says, Do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator, creator of the ends of the earth? He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youth grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. So as we put our hope and confidence in the Lord, He fills our hearts with strength. And He helps us continue to move forward in His power. All who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30 says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. 
Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So when we're weary and burdened by the things of life, the Lord says, Come to me. Come to me, and I will give you rest for your weary heart. It's more than just a physical rest. We're coming to the Lord to find rest for our soul. Matthew, Psalm 62, verse 1 says, My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. And you will find rest for your souls. Find rest, O my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from Him. Trust in Him at all time, O people. Pour out your hearts to Him, for God is our refuge. What causes our souls to become weary in this world today? I know that I often have a weary heart. And it's as I spend time in the Word and with the Lord, being refreshed and renewed and energized in my inner being, that I'm able to continue to move forward in this life that is sometimes hard, lots of times hard. But the Lord does renew my strength as I put my hope and confidence in Him, regardless of the situation going on around me, regardless of what this, weary, this world brings to my life. So our souls become weary because of the demands and heartaches of this world. Our struggle with sin and the spiritual warfare within us as we seek to walk in obedience to the Lord also causes us to grow weary sometimes. We need rest from the chaos and turmoil created within us by the circumstances that we find ourselves in on a daily basis. Only Jesus can bring peace and hope and strength to our weary souls. We go to him who is the father of compassion and the God of all comfort. He comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort others with the comfort we ourselves have received from him. And we receive that comfort as we spend time in his presence, as we seek him through his word and in prayer, and as we learn to walk in obedience to what he shows us. Only Jesus can meet the deepest needs of our heart, and that's where we need to look. He alone, and not our works, um, are what save us. We've been saved by the grace of the Lord Jesus, and so we can't work our way to heaven. Sometimes we get weary trying to work our way to heaven, trying to be good enough to get there. But no matter how good we are, the Bible says that all of our righteous acts are like filthy rags in the eyes of the Lord, and the only thing that can get us to heaven is the Lord Jesus Christ, is our belief in the death of Jesus and what he's done on the cross for us. It is by his grace alone in faith in the Lord Jesus that we are saved. And we can rest in the work that Jesus has done for us in our salvation. He finished the work of redemption for mankind on the cross. His work was completed when he rose from the dead, and now we can rest in the finished work of Christ he died that we might have an abundant life in him and that we would no longer live for ourselves but for him who died for us. He fulfilled the law on our behalf and clothed us in his righteousness, bringing us forgiveness and cleansing us from all unrighteousness. We are saved by his grace that is poured out on our behalf on the cross. We must learn to rest in that finished work. And that's another thing he's talking about, the Sabbath rest is part of resting in the finished work of Christ and and remembering on that day what he has done for us and thanking him. And that really is something we should do on a daily basis. Remember the gospel. Remember what Christ has done for us. Remember who we are in Christ and to find rest in that. We were created by the Lord to do good works for the glory of God, but not to earn our salvation. He demands perfection, and only Jesus is perfect, and only he can get us into right standing with the Father. We find rest for our bodies and souls when we cease from all of our labor and observe the Sabbath. The world can go on without us for one day. Give it a try and experience the blessing of the Lord in your life. Mark 6, 30-31 says, Jesus told his disciples after a busy time of ministry, 
to come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Come with me, the Lord Jesus, to a quiet place and get some rest. That rest gives us energy to continue in ministry, knowing that our labor in the Lord is not in vain. So I just want to encourage you this day to think of ways that you can make the Sabbath day a holy day and truly set it apart. Try not to do the things that you do the rest of the week. Make it be a different kind of day and let your children know the importance of making that a holy day. Everybody does different things on that day and so don't be judgmental of each other for what the Lord is showing you to do but it's between your family and the Lord. Ask the Lord to show you ways that you can honor Him on Sundays and let that be a Sabbath day to the Lord. Some people have to work on Sundays. Pastors work on Sunday. Doctors, nurses, pharmacists. There's a lot of people I know that have jobs where they have to work on Sundays or some Sundays. And so in those cases, they need to, find, need to try to find another day to have a Sabbath rest. And to just spend some time focusing on the Lord and resting. Because our bodies, even you look at scientific um studies our bodies need rest god designed our bodies to need rest he wants us to work because that's a good thing whatever we do we're supposed to work at it with all of our heart as unto the lord he created us in christ jesus to do good works so work is not a curse it's a good thing and it needs to be done for the glory of the lord but yet as we work with all of our heart it's for the lord and everything that the lord calls us to do he's also called us to take a rest to take a break and to focus solely on him on that seventh day to follow his example and when we learn to follow the example of christ and when we learn to walk in obedience to what he commands us to do we experience his power and his presence in our lives in ways that we never have before so trust him enough to take a break trust him enough to be still and sit before him and find rest for your soul and for your body Sundays are what give me the energy and strength to make it through each week. And I always look forward to being at church, to being with the body of Christ, to hearing the word of God proclaimed, to studying the word. Um, it's a special day for me and my family, and I pray that it will be for your family, and you'll find special ways to honor the Lord with that day. Next week, we'll be doing the rest of Genesis 2, when God created Adam and Eve. Um, it's a little, it's a detailed account of Genesis 1 as he goes into the crown and glory um, of his creation, which is man and woman. And we'll talk a little bit about the roles of men and women um, as God designed it to be because he is a God of order and he has a reason for everything that he has done and the way he did everything has a purpose. And so we need to, as we go through the book of Genesis, we're going to look at his plan and see how it's unfolding and just we'll see over and over again the faithfulness of the Lord. Even in our unfaithfulness, he is always faithful. So we're going to see him moving and working throughout the book of Genesis. And I've been studying and learning and growing. And my bedroom is full of a bunch of books that I've been studying and reading. Um, I don't have a sewing room, but I have a Bible study room. And I'm so excited about what the Lord wants to teach me and show me. And, and as he teaches me and shows me things, I hope that... I can share it with you and it will be an encouragement and a blessing to you. Um, so continue to answer those questions. Continue to dig as deep as you can into each chapter of the book of Genesis. And ask the Lord to open your eyes to new truths, to new things he wants to show you. And then walk in obedience to what he teaches you and shows you and share it with other people. I thank you for the privilege and opportunity to be able to um, be a part of your lives and to um, encourage you through the book of Genesis. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love and faithfulness in our lives. We thank you for your word that teaches us, rebukes us, corrects us, and trains us in righteousness that we may, thoroughly, may be thoroughly equipped for every good work that you have for us. Teach us, Lord, the importance of honoring the Sabbath day and keeping it holy. Show us ways that we can do that. Show us ways that we can honor you in that way. Help us to truly um, find time to sit at your feet, to hear your voice, so we might be renewed and energized in you. I thank you, Lord, that in the midst of a busy, crazy world, that we can get aside with you, 
and find rest and comfort and peace and hope and renewed strength. I thank you that on a daily basis you do that in my life, and I ask you to do that in the lives of these ladies. Help them to make time to be with you, to come aside and to find rest for their souls. Help us, Lord, to give you our lives as living sacrifices that are holy and acceptable in your sight, Father. Help us not to conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds in your word and your truth. Help us to be a light in the midst of the darkness and help us not to conform to the ways of the world and, and to live like everybody else does because you have set us apart to live holy and righteous and godly lives. And I ask you to help us to do that. Help us to have a different kind of life, a different family, a different marriage relationship as we walk in the power of your spirit and delight ourselves in you. Continue to strengthen these precious ladies and minister to them in ways that only you can as they sit at your feet this week. It's in your precious and holy name that we pray. Amen.